David here with Fig Boot on Pens. Uh, this past weekend was the annual DC Pen Show, uh, which bills itself as the largest pen show in the world. Uh, it typically draws the largest crowds and the largest number of vendors. Uh, quick side note, uh, a week or so before my trip to DC, I took a trip to Chicago. Uh, while there, I drove up to Appleton, Wisconsin to spend an afternoon with Brian Anderson at their retail location of Anderson Pens. Uh, and then back down in Chicago, I happened to be staying at the hotel where the Anderson's Chicago location is housed and was able to spend a bunch of time with uh, Lisa Anderson at that location. Uh, both locations are very much worth the visit if you're in either area. And if you'd care to see uh, more pictures of each of their retail locations, you can find them on my Instagram or you can find me at figboot11. Okay, back to DC. Uh, for this video, I thought I would do more of a traditional show recap. What I'm going to do is talk a little bit about this year's show, and then I'll go over what I picked up for myself, as well as things that were provided, uh, and give a little bit of a sneak preview of some of the things that you'll be seeing in upcoming reviews. Uh, after any show, my review queue kind of swells, and this show was no exception. Uh, there is a lot to show you, uh, you know, and I'd like to say that uh, things went well this year year in regard to the overall organization of the show. Uh, the hotel was better prepared this year to handle the morning rush for breakfast. Uh, they had multiple buffets there, and, and there weren't any long lines like I had seen in previous years. Uh, there was uh, only one hiccup on Saturday. The show really wasn't supposed to open until 10 a.m., but the crowd arrived rather early, and there were too many people in the lobby, and the uh, fire marshal actually came in and wasn't pleased with the crowd, so everyone was let in early. Uh, the problem with that is that the majority of vendors weren't even at their tables. Everyone was still having breakfast or up in their rooms. Uh, this also meant that the 200 bottles of the free show Monteverde ink were snatched up rather quickly. I actually missed out on the ink, but that's okay. Uh, if you'd care for it, you could actually purchase the show ink from a couple of retailers. Okay, on a side note, uh, the hotel was sold out, uh, but uh, besides the people attending the show, uh, Cirque du Soleil was in town, and the performers were staying at the hotel as well. So in the bar area we would where we would all hang out, uh, you would have little pockets of pen people and then acrobats and dancers. And I really didn't witness too much commingling between the groups. Uh, the show was a bit slow on Friday. Uh, the general consensus was that it was emphasized in the marketing for the show that Friday was for traders only. Well, everyone can be a trader. All it means is that you pay a higher rate for the entire weekend rather than the daily weekend rate. So anyone can attend on a Friday if you pay a little extra money. Uh, when the show opened on Saturday, uh, folks typically rush to the same places. Uh, they will rush to their favorite nib grinder to get on the list for the day, and those lists fill up rather fast. Uh, then there's always a big crowd around the Franklin Kristoff table to check out their show-only prototypes. And there's always a bunch of people around Jonathan Brooks' table as well. Jonathan typically will sell out of virtually all his stock. So folks know that if you want a pen from Jonathan, then you need to pick one up as soon as possible in the morning. That's not a wait till Sunday afternoon kind of purchase. Uh, Artlight it was a pen store in Atlanta which has closed or is closing. I'm not quite sure what it's in the process of. Uh, and they had a table moving some of their inventory. Uh, they had a ton of limited edition Mont Blancs. Uh, they also had a, an ultra black Star Walker for a really great price that I had my eye on. I, and I had every intention of coming back to the table to pick that up, but it slipped my mind and I left the show without doing so. Uh, I actually emailed Steve, the gentleman at the table earlier this week, to see if he still had that pen available, and he did not. It was sold. Uh, and that's the second show in a row where my hesitancy cost me a pretty cool pen. I need to learn to just buy something if I know I'd like it. The show is a great place to get a nib ground. Uh, I had a Leonardo Momento Zero, which arrived to me with a bit of baby's bottom, so I thought that I would get an interesting grind on it. Uh, I was able to have uh, Gina Celerino do a nice cursive italic for me. Gina studied under John Mattishow and has started coming to more shows. Uh, she did a great job and was fun to talk to as she did the work. 
Uh, these were some of the pens from Santini Italia. Uh, I had a real nice conversation with Giovanni Santini, the president of the company. Uh, these pens are made in Italy and all come with gold nibs, which the company produces themselves. Uh, they actually had an example of the different stages of nib production there. Uh, the company is actually looking to gain more traction in the U.S. market, so you might be hearing more from them in the near future. Their pens were nice. Uh, Brian Goulet and Drew Brown from the Goulet Pen Company had a little Q&A session that was very well attended. Uh, I think having seminars and classes like this are a nice way to kind of break up the day when you're attending a show. Uh, okay, one more thing before show and tell. On Thursday night, I went down to the uh, Lincoln and Vietnam Memorials. Uh, whenever I'm in D.C., I stop by there. I won't repeat the story this year, but if you'd like to know why I do so, why don't you check out the end of any of my previous D.C. recaps. But I went down to the wharf area for dinner and actually ran into something cool. Uh, this is a s'mores restaurant. In that little trailer over there, they sell you all the ingredients and a stick, uh, and then you roast your marshmallows over a live fire. Uh, it was something quaint in the middle of a bustling city. Okay, let's take a look at some goodies. And in order to do that, please join me over here at camera two. To begin with, while I did miss out on the show ink, I did walk away with some others. Uh, first up are two inks in the new Monteverde Sweet Life series, which is themed around desserts. We have the strawberry shortcake and the key lime pie. Uh, and then here's what the inks look like. Uh, I'm really liking this red on the strawberry shortcake. And then the, for the key lime pie, uh, it has some nice shading when you use a pen with a heavier flow. Uh, then I have a brand new Papier Plume ink, which is exclusive to Points Pens, and it is called Spruce Knob, which is the highest mountain in the state of West Virginia. And this particular ink is a very nice blue-green. And then, speaking of Papier Plume, uh, I actually received a bottle of their latest limited edition ink, which will be available for purchase at the San Francisco Pen Show coming up in a couple of weeks, and that is Marina Green. Uh, it's a real nice, saturated, more vibrant green color here. And like I said, that this is going to be available for purchase at the San Francisco Show, uh, and then it'll be available for, for purchase on the Papier Plume site if and only if they still have inventory after the show. Now, people at the show would ask me what's on my shopping list, and my answer would always be that I wanted to buy what I didn't even know I wanted to buy yet. Basically, I wanted to discover something new that really piqued my interest and that I could get excited about. And I was able to find a few of those things at the show. Uh, first of all, we have a few things from Galen Leather. Uh, they've been around for a while, uh, and while they were a new company to me, and this was their first DC show, there was a lot of buzz around their table the entire weekend. They were really one of the superstars of the weekend. Yousef, the man behind the brand, is from Turkey. I had a chance to speak with Yousef a number of times during the show, and he was a real joy to get to know. They have some fantastic stuff. Um, first of all, I have this really cool zippered pouch, uh, and inside there are three very nice Tomoe River notebooks, uh, and then some other accoutrements to go with it. A little writing pad, uh, and then some pages that you can put underneath since all of these are blank. Uh, but these are very, very nice. I'll get into more uh, detail on these when I actually review these. Then we have a very nice 48 pen case. I'm kind of showing it sideways here so that it actually fits on the screen, but it has a very nice zipper and I'm really loving the leather on here. Maybe it does kind of fit, but you can see here that it's a very nice 48 pen case. Real nice suede leather on the inside. And something that I'm really liking uh, is one is that over time, this thing's gonna gain all sorts of character. You can see it's getting a few marks on it just from having it a little bit, but I think that's gonna get a lot of character over time. Uh, and then also, I really like that the loops here are rather large, uh, at least larger than the typical cases that I use. And they're more accommodating of larger pens, which I seem to have a large number of in my collection. Uh, and so this is something that I'm really enjoying, and this is a 48 pen case. 
And then finally, uh, the coolest thing in my opinion from Galen is this zippered A5 notebook folio. Um, it unzips, again, I think this leather is going to gain some incredible character over time as it gets all marked up and scuffed up. Uh, this is one of their notebooks. And I'm just really thinking that there are so many things in here I love about this uh, folio. It has so many cool little features. I don't have time to delve into it right now, but suffice to say, I'm loving this folio so far, and I really haven't even used it that much. Uh, I will try to get a review out of this Galen loot sooner rather than later, because I think it's high quality leather goods that more folks need to know about. Um, also, it was kind of nice because when you uh, made a purchase from them, uh, your purchase, uh, they gave you one of these really nice uh, kind of canvas backpack things which was nice so that you you saw these bags all over the show as people had made their kind of bulky purchases it kind of was nice that then you had something to carry it around with which was nice I picked up some loose leaf Tomoe River paper. Uh, this is what I actually use to write letters on. Uh, I've mentioned this before, but my mailing address is always in the notes below each video. Uh, and if you take time to write me a letter, then I will commit to write you back. Uh, and sometimes I'll include a little extra, something extra in with the letter back to you as well. But I love getting letters from viewers from around the world. It's one of my favorite things about running this channel. I love hearing from everybody. Next up, I picked up a wrap from Yenderings. Uh, Yenderings is a Canadian company based out of Toronto, and this is their YYZ design. Uh, YYZ is actually the airport code for Toronto. Uh, I know that not because I've been to Toronto, but because I am a big fan of the band Rush, who had an instrumental song called YYZ. Uh, the name of this version is uh, called Let's Ice Cream in Kensington. Uh, outside, uh, it has a real nice teal base, uh, and then it's kind of paired with some uh, sky blue and white houndstooth pattern. Then inside here, there is an orange micro, micro suede lining, uh, and then it has some geometric print fabric, kind of meant to be reminiscent of sprinkles on, type of, on top of ice cream. Uh, it's very soft. Uh, and while I'm starting to accumulate a, a number of pen wraps and things like this, I think this one is definitely going to get the use. Uh, and it uh, was something that was not provided to me. Uh, I purchased this at full price for myself. Okay, one more thing before we get to the pens, and that is this book. Uh, it is a book called Working Journal by Michael Fiedler. Uh, it was recently released, and Michael is selling them at the show. Uh, Michael is a professional photojournalist and fountain pen lover, and he put this book together to show people in a unique light with a very nice picture of them at work and to accompany that the subject of the picture writes a bit about their life and work. Uh, it is kind of neat to see everyone in their place of work and then their kind of their story and a little bit about them in their own handwriting and i think that that's interesting there's lots of interesting characters in here and well as well uh, this is marilyn who was a waitress in a, a diner that michael michael frequents on a regular basis uh, and then let's see what else is in here oh here's a picture of lauren you might know her as fly girl elliot on instagram uh, this is a nice picture of her in a cockpit she is a pilot with her Montegrappa aviator, I believe. Uh, and then also, Michael said that when I was talking to them, that he, while he was out and about, he would always keep an eye out for interesting images. Uh, and that's how he found Jake here, uh, who is a rake man on a road crew. Uh, Michael was driving around one night and pulled over when he noticed this road crew working. And that uh, I really liked this picture. Uh, I liked the, the steam in the background and the way the harsh lights create some shadows on this gentleman's face. I can practically smell the hot asphalt. Uh, you know, I'm looking forward to sitting down and reading this book. Okay, let's move on to the pens. We'll start with the two pens that I purchased for myself. Uh, last year at the DC show, I discovered pen 18111. I picked up this pen here, uh, which is something that I absolutely adore. It is actually one of my favorite pens. Uh, when I was deciding what to purchase last year, it came down to this model here, which is called the Night Sky Sakura, and an another model called the Pink Sakura. And this year, I picked up another pen. And what did I pick up? 
Let's actually take a look in here. I picked up the pink model. This is the pink Sakura. And I think this is just a simply gorgeous pen. And I actually think these make a really nice pair. Uh, there is a different style clip on some of uh, Yoshi's pens from Pen 18111. Here's a picture of it. It's of a flowering cherry blossom tree as opposed to the bare branches on the two that I purchased. It's a nice look, but for me, it's a bit much for my taste, and I kind of prefer the plain branches, which I love. Uh, for now, uh, I'm just going to keep the, the medium Yovo nib on it that came with it, but who knows, maybe I'll put something interesting on here to add to the character of this pen. We'll see. But um, I just love Yoshi's work. I do have a review of this Night Size Sky Secure. Uh, the techniques he uses to create these pens is amazing, so if you haven't seen that, I'd highly recommend checking that out on my channel channel. Next up is the other pen that I purchased, which is one from Shown Design. And that, uh, is, how you spell that is just S-C-H-O-N, and then design is not spelled out, it's D-S-G-N. I, I had a chance to have a real nice conversation with Ian Schoen, the man behind the brand. Uh, he hand turns all of these pens, they are metal. Uh, he started by making some rollerball pens, and he has now begun to include fountain pens in his lineup. He had a variety of anodized colors that looked really nice. Uh, this is a pocket pen and what I love about this pen besides the cool looks is this little pocket pen is packing a number six Bach nib. Just look at that and what happens is what you do is you twist to post this pen and then it is plenty long enough to use. Uh, Ian is not selling these pens on his website quite yet. Uh, they've made their debut at the DC show, and I believe Ian said he's going to be at the San Francisco show. So if you're planning to attend that show, I would strongly recommend picking up one of these pens. Uh, they were very reasonably priced as well. Once they become available for purchase outside of shows, then I'll definitely be doing a review of this pen. Uh, it's an interesting design from an interesting company. Next, I have a pen from a brand new company, which in my opinion was one of the more popular tables at the DEC show, and that was Narwhal. Uh, first of all, they get points for a cool company name and a cool logo. And then, here is the pen. We'll just set this aside. Uh, it is a translucent piston filler, uh, which sells for around $50 online. They had them actually a little cheaper at the show. Um, it was funny because Frank and Samuel, the gentleman behind the brand, had all their pens out on display. And on Friday, I would mentioned before it was a little bit slow, and they began leaving some of the slots on their display empty because they wanted to give the impression that their pens were selling and there was demand for them, uh, which kind of made me chuckle because I had a feeling I knew what was going to happen. And sure enough, on Saturday, when the big crowds arrived, uh, they started selling very well. And I believe by the end of the show, they actually did sell out of all their inventory. Uh, you'll be seeing a review and a giveaway of this pen coming up in the very near future. And you're also going to start seeing this pen uh, at a number of retailers. It's a very high quality pen for the price, real nice piston filler, and it looks nice too. So uh, I think that uh, the boys from Narwhal have a bit of a hit on their hands. Next is a pen from Le Bon, and this is their latest model, which is called Sun. Uh, it is a nice muted orange. It also included this little bookmark in here. Le bon has come out with uh, a number of really interesting pens over the last couple of years. Uh, each of them I've tested have written very well. I haven't inked this one up yet, but I'm confident that this model will be no exception. But look for this to be reviewed sometime in the near future. Up next, I have a couple of pens provided by Points Pens. Uh, on a side note, uh, during my last Q&A, I demonstrated the ink cleaning handmade soap that Points Pens offers on their site, uh, and they did quickly sell out. But now they actually have additional inventory, so if you couldn't pick up some of that soap earlier, now's a good time to do so. Uh, it does work as advertised. But in regard to pens, I have this Caran 849. And while the Le bon was a muted orange, the 849 is definitely not. This thing is a bright, bright orange. 
Uh, this is a reasonably priced pen, around the $50 range, I believe, but look for this in an upcoming review, and I will be giving this one away as well. Also, from Points Pens, we have an something from Opus 88, which is their clear demonstrator. Uh, I really like the looks of this pen. Uh, I've committed to giving this one away after the review, but I might just need to get one of these for myself. Uh, I just really like this frosted look. I like the size of this pen, uh, and I like the, uh, the matte black uh, clip. There's just a lot to like about this pen, so I have a feeling it's going to end up in my collection. Okay, and finally, I have three pens from a company which is relatively new to me by the name of Waldman. Uh, Luxury Brands, the U.S. distributor for a number of brands, recently added Waldman to their fold. Uh, it's a U.K.-based brand that has been around for over 100 years. Uh, Luxury Brands was nice enough to provide me with three different models to check out. Uh, we have the Concorde which is a little bit on the thinner side uh, and that has some rings in here. Then next up, we have the Extra Vienna, which is again on the thinner side, but it has some resin, but then a metal cap. And all of these engravings in here are done by hand. That's not machined. It's all done by hand in there, which is actually really nice. Uh, and then finally, we have a larger pen, which is called the Commander. Uh, it is made of metal and has some resin inlays in here, but since it is made of metal, it is a bit on the hefty side. As you can see, Waldman tends to incorporate a great deal of metal into their designs, and I find them interesting. Uh, here in the near future, I'm going to be doing an overview of the brand, uh, and I'll take a closer look at these pens, and I'll actually be giving one of them away. So, there was my DC haul. I hope you enjoyed taking a look at everything. Uh, you'll be seeing more of this and these items in reviews over the next couple of months. And as I mentioned, there's going to be quite a few giveaways as well. So look forward to that. The DC show was great. It was fun hanging out with old friends and making new ones, uh, going out to dinner with friends and families and hanging out in the bar until 1 a.m. every night. Uh, I even had a friend in the business approach me wanting to provide a prize for the next puzzle contest I run. Uh, and believe me, it will be a very nice prize, something valued around $500. And the contest is actually going to relate to a very worthwhile cause as well. So look forward to that coming up in the near future. Uh, I'm already looking forward to my next show, which most likely will be in Atlanta of next year, so it'll be a bit of a stretch between shows. Uh, until next time, thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you later.